of the use of riches an epistle to the right honorable alan lord bathurst by alexander pope read for LibriVox.org by sean bayern in tallahassee florida who shall decide when doctors disagree and soundest casuists doubt like you and me you hold the word from jove to momus given that man was made the standing jest of heaven and gold but sent to keep the fools in play for half to heap and half to throw away. But I, who think more highly of our kind, and surely heaven and I are of a mind, opine that nature, as in duty bound, deep hid the shining mischief underground. But when by man's audacious labor won, flamed forth this rival to its sire the sun, then in plain prose were made two sorts of men, to squander some, and some to hide again like doctors thus when much dispute has passed we find our tenets just the same at last both fairly owning riches in effect no grace of heaven or token of the elect given to the fool the mad the vain the evil to ward to waters charteris and the devil what nature wants commodious gold bestows tis thus we eat the bread another sows but how unequal it bestows observe tis thus we riot while who sow it starve what nature wants a phrase i much distrust extends to luxury extends to lust and if we count among the needs of life another's toil why not another's wife useful we grant it serves what life requires but dreadful too the dark assassin hires trade it may help society extend but lures the pirate and corrupts the friend it raises armies in a nation's aid, but bribes a senate and the lands betrayed. Oh, that such bulky bribes as all might see still as of old encumbered villainy! In vain may heroes fight and patriots rave, if secret gold saps on from knave to knave. Could France or Rome divert our brave designs with all their brandies or with all their wines? What could they more than knights and squires confound? Or water all the quorum ten miles round? A statesman slumbers how this speech would spoil. Sir, Spain has sent a thousand jars of oil. Huge bales of British cloth blockade the door. A hundred oxen at your levee roar. Poor avarice one torment more would find nor could profusion squander all in kind astride his cheese sir morgan might we meet and worldly crying coals from street to street whom with a wig so wild and mean so mazed pity mistakes for some poor tradesman crazed had hawley's fortune lain in hops and hogs scarce hawley's self had sent it to the dogs his grace will game to whites a bull be led with spurning heels and with a butting head to whites be carried as to ancient games fair coursers vases and alluring dames shall then uxorio if the stakes he sweep bear home six whores and make his lady weep or soft adonis so perfumed and fine drive to st james's a whole herd of swine o oh, filthy check on all industrious skill to spoil the nation's last great trade quadrille once we confess beneath the patriot's cloak from the cracked bag the dropping guineas spoke and jingling down the back stairs told the crew old cato is as great a rogue as you blessed paper credit that advanced so high shall lend corruption lighter wings to fly gold imped with this may compass hardest things may pocket states or fetch or carry kings a single leaf may waft an army o'er or ship off senates to some distant shore a leaf like sibyl scattered to and fro our fates and fortunes as the wind shall blow well then since with the world we stand or fall come take it as we find it gold and all what riches give us let us first inquire meat fire and clothes what more meat clothes and fire is this too little would you more than live alas tis more than turner finds they give alas tis more than all his visions past unhappy warden waking found at last what can they give to dying hopkins heirs to chartres vigor jaffet nose and ears 
can they in gems bid pallid hippia glow in fulvia's buckleys the throbs below or heal old narcissus thy obscener ale with all the embroidery plastered at thy tail they might were harpax not too wise to spend give harpax self the blessing of a friend or find some doctor that would save the life of wretched shylock spite of shylock's wife but thousands die without or this or that die and endow a college or a cat to some indeed heaven grants the happier fate to enrich a bastard or a son they hate perhaps you think the poor might have their part bond damns the poor and hates them from his heart the grave sir gilbert holds it for a rule that every man in want is knave or fool god cannot love says blunt with lifted eyes the wretch he starves and piously denies but reverend sutton with a softer air admits and leaves them providence's care yet to be just to these poor men of pelf each does but hate his neighbour as himself damned to the mines an equal fate betides the slave that digs it and the slave that hides who suffer thus mere charity should own must act on reasons powerful though unknown some war some plague some famine they foresee some revelation hid from you and me why shylock wants a meal the cause is found he thinks a loaf will rise to fifty pound what made directors cheat in south sea year to live on venison when it's sold so dear ask you why phryne the whole auction buys phryne foresees a general excise why she and lesbia raise that monstrous sum alas they fear a man will cost a plum wise peter sees the world's respect for gold and therefore hopes this nation may be sold glorious ambition peter swell thy store and be what rome's great didius was before the crown of poland venal twice an age to just three millions stinted modest gauge but nobler scenes maria's dreams unfold hereditary realms and worlds of gold congenial souls whose life one avarice joins and one fate buries in the historian minds much injured blunt why bears he britain's hate a wizard told him in these words our fate at length corruption like a general flood so long by watchful ministers withstood shall deluge all and avarice creeping on spread like a low-born mist and blot the sun statesman and patriot ply alike the stocks pierce and butler share alike the box the judge shall job the bishop bite the town and mighty dukes pack cards for half a crown see britain sunk in lucre's sordid charms and france revenged of anne and edward's arms no poor court badge great scrivener fired thy brain no lordly luxury no city gain but twas thy righteous end ashamed to see senates degenerate patriots disagree and nobly wishing party rage to cease to buy both sides and give thy country peace all this is madness cries a sober sage but who my friend has reason in his rage the ruling passion be it what it will the ruling passion conquers reason still less mad the wildest whimsy we can frame than even that passion if it has no aim for though such motives folly you may call the folly's greater to have none at all hear then the truth tis heaven each passion sends and different men directs to different ends extremes in nature equal good to produce extremes in man concur to general use ask we what makes one keep and one bestow that power who bids the ocean ebb and flow bids seed time harvest equal course maintain through reconciled extremes of drought and rain builds life on death on change duration founds and gives the eternal wheels to know their rounds riches like insects when concealed they lie wait but for wings and in their season fly who sees pale mammon pine amidst his store sees but a backward steward for the poor this year a reservoir to keep and spare the next a fountain sprouting through his air in lavish streams to quench a country's thirst and men and dogs shall drink him till they burst 
old Kata shamed his fortune and his birth, yet was not Kata void of wit or worth. What though the use of barbarous spits forgot, his kitchen vied in coolness with his grot, his court with nettles moat with cresses stored, with soups unbought and salads blessed his board. If Kata lived on pulse, it was no more than Brahmins, saints, and sages did before. To cram the rich was prodigal expense, and who would take the poor from providence? Like some lone chartreuse stands the good old hall, silence without and fasts within the wall. No raftered roofs with dance and tabor sound, no noontide bell invites the country round. Tenants with sighs the smokeless towers survey, and turn the unwilling steeds another way. Benighted wanderers, the forest o'er, curse the saved candle and an opening door, while the gaunt mastiff, growling at the gate, affrights the beggar whom he longs to eat. Not so his son, he marked this oversight, and then mistook reverse of wrong for right. For what to shun will no great knowledge need, but what to follow is a task indeed. What slaughtered hecatombs, what floods of wine, Fill the capacious squire and deep divine. Yet no mean motive this profusion draws, His oxen perish in his country's cause. Tis the dear prince, Sir John, that crowns thy cup, And zeal for his great house that eats thee up. The woods recede around the naked seat, The sylvans groan, no matter, for the fleet. Next goes his wool to clothe our valiant bands. Last, for his country's love, he sells his lands. Bankrupt, at court in vain he pleads his cause. His thankless country leaves him to her laws. The sense to value riches, with the art to enjoy them, and the virtue to impart, not meanly nor ambitiously pursued, not sunk by sloth nor raised by servitude, to balance fortune by a just expense, join with economy magnificence, with splendor charity, with plenty health. Oh, teach us, Bathurst, yet unspoiled by wealth, that secret rare between the extremes to move, of mad good nature and of mean self-love. To want or worth well weighed be bounty given, and ease or emulate the care of heaven, whose measure full or flows on human race, mends fortune's fault and justifies her grace. Wealth in the gross is death, but life diffused, as poison heals in just proportion used. In heaps like ambergris a stink it lies, but well dispersed is incense to the skies. Who starves by nobles, or with nobles eats? The wretch that trusts them, and the rogue that cheats. Is there a lord who knows a cheerful noon without a fiddler, flatterer, or buffoon, whose table wit or modest merit share unelbowed by a gamester, pimp, or player? Who copies yours or Oxford's better part to ease the pressed and raise the sinking heart? Where he shines, O oh, fortune, gild the scene, and angels guard him in the golden mean. There English bounty yet a while may stand, and honor linger ere it leaves the land. But all our praises, why should lords engross? Rise, honest muse, and sing the man of Ross. Pleased Vega echoes through her winding bounds, and rapid Severn hoarse applause resounds. Who hung with woods yon mountain's sultry brow? From the dry rock who bade the waters flow? Not to the skies in useless columns tossed, or in proud falls magnificently lost, but clear and artless pouring through the plain, health to the sick, and solace to the swain, whose causeway parts the vale with shady rose, whose seats the weary traveller repose, who feeds yon almshouse neat but void of state, where age and want sit smiling at the gate, who taught that heaven-directed spire to rise, the man of Ross, each lisping babe, replies, Behold the market-place with poor o'erspread, the man of Ross divides the weekly bread. 
him portioned maids apprenticed orphans blessed the young who labor and the old who rest is any sick the man of ross relieves prescribes attends the medicine makes and gives is there a variance enter but his door balk to the courts and contest is no more despairing quacks with curses fled the place and vile attorneys now a useless race thrice happy man enabled to pursue what all so wish but want the power to do oh say what sums that generous hand supply what minds to swell that boundless charity of debt and taxes wife and children clear this man possessed five hundred pounds a year blush grandeur blush proud courts withdraw your blaze ye little stars hide your diminished rays and what no monument inscription stone his race his form his name almost unknown who builds a church to god and not to fame will never mark the marble with his name go search it there where to be born and die of rich and poor makes all the history enough that virtue filled the space between proved by the ends of being to have been when hopkins dies a thousand lights attend the wretch who living saved a candle's end shouldering god's altar a vile image stands belies his features nay extends his hands that live-long wig which gorgon's self might own eternal buckle takes in parian stone behold what blessings wealth to life can lend and see what comfort it affords our end in the worst inn's worst room with mat half hung the floors of plaster and the walls of dung on once a flock bed but repaired with straw with tape tied curtains never meant to draw the georgian garter dangling from that bed where tawdry yellow strove with dirty red great villers lies alas how changed from him that life of pleasure and that soul of whim gallant and gay in cliveden's proud alcove the bower of wanton shrewsbury and love or just as gay at council in a ring of mimicked statesmen and the merry king no wit to flatter left of all his store no fool to laugh at which he valued more there victor of his health of fortune friends and fame this lord of useless thousands ends his grace's fate sage cutler could foresee and well he thought advised him live like me as well his grace replied like you sir john that i can do when all i have is gone resolve me reason which of these is worse want with a full or with an empty purse thy life more wretched cutler was confessed arise and tell me was thy death more blessed cutler saw tenants break and houses fall for very want he could not build a wall his only daughter in a stranger's power for very want he could not pay a dower a few gray hairs his reverend temples crowned twas very want that sold them for two pound what even denied a cordial at his end banished the doctor and expelled the friend what but a want which you perhaps think mad yet numbers feel the want of what he had cutler and brutus dying both exclaim virtue and wealth what are ye but a name say for such worth are other worlds prepared or are they both in this their own reward that naughty point my lord shall i discuss or tell a tale a tale it follows thus where london's column pointing at the skies like a tall bully lifts the head and lies there dwelt a citizen of sober fame a plain good man and balaam was his name religious punctual frugal and so forth his word would pass for more than he was worth one solid dish his weekday meal affords an added pudding solemnized the lords constant to church and change his gains were sure his givings rare save farthings to the poor the devil was piqued such saintship to behold and longed to tempt him like good job of old but satan now is wiser than of yore and tempts by making rich not making poor roused by the prince of air the whirlwinds sweep the surge and plunge his father in the deep then full against his cornish lands they roar and two rich shipwrecks bless the lucky shore 
Sir Balam now, he lives like other folks. He takes his chirping pint and cracks his jokes. Live like yourself was soon my lady's word, and lo, two puddings smoked upon the board. Asleep and naked as an Indian lay, an honest factor stole a gem away. He pledged it to the knight. The knight had wit, so kept the diamond, and the rogue was bit. Some scruple rose, but thus he eased his thought. I'll give now sixpence where I gave a groat. Where once I went to church, I'll now go twice, and am so clear, too, of all other vice. The tempter saw his time, the work he plied. Stocks and subscriptions poured on every side, and all the demon makes his full descent in one abundant shower of cent per cent, sinks deep within him and possesses whole, then dubs director and secures his soul. Behold Sir Balam now, a man of spirit, ascribes his gettings to his parts and merit what late he called a blessing now was wit and god's good providence a lucky hit things changed their titles as our manners turn his counting-house employed the sunday morn seldom at church twas such a busy life but duly sent his family and wife there so the devil ordained one christmas tide my good old lady catched a cold and died a nymph of quality admires our knight he marries, bows at court, and grows polite, leaves the dull sits, and joins to please the fair, the well-bred cookles in St. James's air. First for his son a gay commission buys, who drinks, whores, fights, and in a duel dies. His daughter flaunts a viscount's tawdry wife, she bears a coronet and pox for life. In Britain's senate he a seat obtains, and one more pensioner since Stephen gains. My lady falls to play, so bad her chance, he must repair it, takes a bribe from France. The house impeach him, Corningsby harangues, the court forsakes him, and Sir Balam hangs. Wife, son, and daughter, Satan are thy prize, and sad Sir Balam curses God and dies. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.